Elon Musk has bought 9.2% of Twitter's shares, making him one of the largest shareholders in Twitter. This has sent Twitter's stock price soaring some 20-something percent. But what could have triggered this? It clearly came off the back of Elon Musk expressing some dissatisfaction about free speech on Twitter. So he clearly had some displeasure about Twitter's moderation practices. But what could this purchase mean for Twitter going forward? Could it launch a buyout? Or is he just going to sit there on his 9.2%? So let's have a look at that. Now my name's Mark, welcome back to the channel. If you have any thoughts about what Elon Musk is doing with his Twitter shares, let me know that in the comments below. And otherwise, of course, it would be great if you liked the video and subscribed to the channel. And this video is brought to you by ShareSite, which is a platform that enables you to monitor all of your stock holdings across multiple exchanges and also all of your other asset holdings in order to look at what your whole portfolio is worth and to generate insights in terms of how to improve your stock performance going forward. So what exactly has happened here? Well, Elon Musk has bought, like I said, 9.2% of Twitter's shares. This, as of Friday's closing price, was worth around $2.9 billion. Now, notably, Twitter's share price has significantly increased on this news. The share price obviously fluctuates somewhat. At one point in pre-market trade, it was up around 25%. However, just before trade was opening, it was around the 20% increase. So a significant increase notwithstanding. This comes off the back of really two major things. Firstly, Elon Musk had expressed dissatisfaction about Twitter's free speech policies and the moderation of speech on Twitter. For example, Twitter have obviously banned Donald Trump from the platform, and Elon Musk had been expressing some disquiet about this, noting in a poll that Twitter is the town square, proverbially, of current discourse and asking whether Twitter enforces and upholds free speech principles. There had also been some talk about whether Elon Musk would buy Twitter leading up to this. Clearly he's bought 9.2%, but that is a far cry from buying all of Twitter. Nevertheless, there had been some talk about whether Elon Musk would do this. So will this lead to Elon Musk doing a whole takeover, or what is he going to do with the 9.2%? Well, Elon Musk has been relatively quiet about this, so we are really crystal ball gazing about what Elon Musk might do with the 9.2% of Twitter. But there's a few possibilities that we can go through. The first major possibility is Elon Musk, potentially in addition to a consortium of other buyers, could buy out Twitter. This appears to be what could have driven the 25% uplift in Twitter's share price, because this would be effectively assuming there is a takeover premium being paid to Twitter's shareholders. Because typically when there's a takeover, there's a takeover premium of around the 20% area. So the 20% uplift could be reflecting anticipation of a possible buyout. Whether Elon Musk does this off his own back, basically he just goes out and buys it by himself, or whether he gets a syndicate or consortium of other buyers would be another issue entirely. But at this point, this is just speculation. Because at this point, there is no solid information that Elon Musk or anyone else is looking to buy Twitter. Nevertheless, someone buying a large block like this can give rise to a toehold, which can then give rise to an acquisition later on. There's evidence, for example, that acquirers might do this in order to perhaps get familiar with the governance structures of the company as a stepping stone toward doing a full acquisition. So it could be a stepping stone toward a total acquisition of the company, theoretically anyway. Whether or not that would occur remains to be seen. However, I would regard that as unlikely. The reason I'd say that is Elon Musk would probably do a full takeover bid rather than buying a block, driving up the share price. It would appear to be ill-advised to buy a block, which would increase the share price by 20 to 25%, and then do your acquisition, because you're ultimately going to pay more for it than if you just do the acquisition to begin with. So this, to my mind, would not be the most effective way to go about doing an acquisition in this case. Nevertheless, it's theoretically possible. Secondly, he could be trying to amass enough shares in order to effectively block major changes. So for example, Elon Musk at the moment owns 9.2% of the shares, but he could try to amass more and more shares, which could then, if he gets over the squeeze-out threshold, prevent another acquirer from taking over the company, 
and or if he gets enough shares, he could potentially block special resolutions and the like. Thirdly, he might be doing this just to influence the nature of the board of directors. So if the board of directors, shareholders will vote upon that. Typically, a 9.2% block holding is going to give you enough votes in a company in order to either get rid of a director or install at least one director because you'll be voting your shares on each individual appointment. So he might be able to have significant impact over the board of directors for Twitter. This will be incredibly helpful because if he feels like Twitter is going in the wrong direction according to him, then by changing the board, he'll be able to change the management of the company. And then ultimately we'll be able to influence who is the CEO of the firm by influencing the board. This is effectively a proxy contest. Now, these are typically time consuming and take a very long time and a lot of effort to get done, but that could easily be what he's trying to do. Effectively, not a takeover, but a proxy contest, which could ultimately achieve the same purpose if his goal is to enhance free speech, at least in his mind. So that could easily be what is driving it. He might also be just buying it in order to erroneously think he can influence how the company is run immediately. A shareholder at 9.2% would not be able to influence the day-to-day -day operations of the company. But some people might erroneously think that he could. And he might erroneously think that he could, but I suspect he's more intelligent than that. A shareholder is not to get involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the company under most corporations law. So he will not be able to influence free speech policies at, at Twitter directly because he is not owning 100% of the firm. He is not the CEO of the firm. He is not involved in day-to-day -day operations. The only way he could do this is by voting his shares to get the board to do something. He would not himself be able to control free speech policies at Twitter. Therefore, he will not be able to directly get involved in day-to-day -day management. He might also try to be buying here to effectively send a warning signal to managers to uphold free speech principles, at least in his mind. Now, he might not be able to directly involve himself in day-to-day -day operations, but institutional investors or large block holders can, of course, vote their shares on various corporate policies. He could put up a corporate policy requiring the managers to do particular things in relation to free speech. He could put this up for votes at an, an extraordinary general meeting or an annual general meeting, and he could potentially get it voted upon. And if he's got enough shares, that could pass and that could ultimately bind what the managers do going forward. So he could easily be trying to influence managers by voting his shares in that respect. That's perfectly normal in what shareholders oft times do. We've seen progressive activists do this, and Elon Musk might be going by that same playbook. So it could easily be the case he'll be trying to put up that vote, which is quite possible and that's well within his rights. But he would not be able to directly tell the CEO what to do. He would be able to vote his shares to get resolutions passed to influence how the company is run, if you get the subtle difference there. He can vote his shares, but he can't go out and dictate to the CEO because he only owns 9.2%. He could also subtly influence things by threatening to sell his shares if a particular thing happens that he's displeased with. And there might be, to some extent, a little bit of caution thrown to the CEO to not ban Elon Musk if Elon Musk owns so many shares. So to some extent, he might be protecting himself because if Elon Musk is banned but owns 9.2%, he can potentially put up an, a resolution at the AGM or the EGM uh, to get the board to reinstate him or to get the company to reinstate him. So he owns enough shares effectively to protect himself through votes. And a 9.2% block order is massive. So that could be what's driving the shareholding. So in general terms, the reason I think he's bought this is in order to try to influence corporate policies by voting his shares, potentially get friendly directors, potentially protect himself from being deplatformed. I doubt he will be doing a takeover because this doesn't look like a strategic way to get it done. Nevertheless, I could be proven wrong, and the market does seem to believe that he might be doing further action, at least at the time of recording, given the market's strongly positive reaction to Elon Musk's moves here. In any case, those are my thoughts on it. If you think I've missed anything, or if you have any other thoughts about Elon Musk's decision to purchase shares in Twitter, let me know that in the comments below. And otherwise, of course, it would be great if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel. And hopefully I will see you for future videos as well.